If you are tired of reading a book and forgetting everything after a few days, then you clicked on the right thumbnail. Hey all, this is Juan Cruz from Innerize and in this video we'll explore how to read a book to maximize your learning. I've been reading books consistently for quite a few years now and I remember that in the beginning I was very frustrated because I couldn't remember anything I read. It's like my mind once a week or two went by, dumped everything it had absorbed from the last book I finished and I couldn't understand why. But then I found a book called How to Read a Book by Mortimer J. Adler that taught me well how to actually read a book. So after years of applying his method in hundreds of books, I distilled his teachings and my experience into this video, so I'm pretty excited to tell you about it. But before getting into the specifics of the method, it's important to distinguish that there are two different goals for reading non-fiction books. The first one is to gather information. This type of reading doesn't require that much attention from our part, and what we learn will be quickly forgotten. It takes place when we read the newspaper, the dictionary, or some article on the internet for a project. Once we have found what we were looking for, our task is complete and our minds disengage. The second goal is to increase understanding. Reading for understanding is learning. It's when we comprehend what something is about, why it's the case, what are the causes and effects, and you start making connections with other topics. This is what makes the difference between remembering something and being able to explain it. Yeah, sure, I know the formula E equals MC squared, but can I explain it? Nah. Your ultimate goal when reading non-fiction shouldn't just be to gather information and increase your personal library, it should be to learn from the best books out there and incorporate that knowledge as it was yours. Now, let's dive into the technique itself. As Adler says in his book, if a book is worth reading at all, it is worth three readings at least. Step zero would be to find the best books possible and that can be quite daunting. If you don't know where to start, you can check my video of the best books I've ever read or check my book list link in the description. The technique itself consists of three steps of reading. The first one is called structural reading, the second is analytical reading, and the third critical reading. Stage 1. In this stage, the objective is to analyze the book's structure and understand its context. It's getting an idea of what the book is about and its main arguments. To do this, it's a good idea to google the author and find out who he or she is, what has she done before, his usual point of view, and so on. Also, if the book is an old one, it's good to read at least the context in which it was written. If you're reading 20th century philosophy, for example, it might be important to consider the two word wars and their political implications. Once you understand who the author is and the book's context, the next step is to go to the book's table of content. This is a book's way to show you its skeleton and help you grasp what's its main idea as well as how it's structured. Then quickly skim through the book, find out which chapters are the most important and read a couple of their paragraphs. Also, many books have a short summary at the end of the chapter, so try to find them as well. After doing this, try to come up with one sentence that encapsulates the book's main idea. This whole process shouldn't take you more than 15 to 20 minutes. Once you understand what the book is going to be about, you are ready for stage 2, analytical reading. This is where the magic happens. The goal of this stage is interpretation of the book's content. You should aim to understand what the book is about as a whole, which are its main components, arguments, propositions, questions and answers. Read carefully, without hurrying, from the first page to the last, and try to comprehend every sentence you encounter. Highlight the most important parts, write clarifying notes next to passages, or stick post-it notes with ideas that come into your mind. If you have a Kindle or read ebooks, be sure to check my video on the Kindle note-taking system. In this stage, you should feel that you were the one that wrote the book. Most people who read stop at this stage, and by doing so, miss out on a whole lot of learning. But since we know better, after we carefully read the book, we will proceed to stage 3, summarizing and critical reading. After you know the book in and out, you highlighted the most important ideas and made annotations, it's time for stage 3. Here you want to reread the highlighted parts as well as your comments and create your own summary of the book. In this way you'll distill its essence in a few pages, which will deepen your understanding and absorptions of the concepts. Also, take the liberty to add some of your thoughts. Now that you know what the author is saying, it's time to ask yourself what's your view on the matter. 
Do you agree or disagree with the book as a whole? Perhaps do you agree with most of the book and not with some of the author's arguments? In your summary, maybe with a different color, write down what you think, if you agree or disagree with the author's ideas and why. This is what Bill Gates has to say about it. If I disagree with the book, sometimes it takes a long time to read the book because I'm writing so much in the margin, it's actually kind of frustrating. Of course, you'll not be able to do this with every book. If you're reading biology or mathematics, there will be little room for discussion, but that might be different in psychology, philosophy or economics. Also, be sure to write down the connections you make with other books you've read, courses you've taken or experiences you've went through. The act of linking one book to another and comparing them will create an unconscious conceptual map in your mind that will boost your divergent thinking abilities. Perhaps you are reading a financial advice book that suggests investing in stocks, but you remember reading a book a few weeks ago saying that real estate is the best choice. Write that down and figure out why they are saying that and which are their arguments. Then make your own conclusions and write that down too. Or perhaps you're reading about morality and find out that two authors that you've read think about the subject differently. Why is that the case? And for you, who's right and who's wrong? And why? As a last step, you may choose to highlight the summary that you made with your comments, opinions and conclusions so if in the future you'll want to revisit them, it will be way easier to find what you are looking for. Here's where Adler's reading system stops. By my experience, I found that there's one more pretty useful step that can be added to the technique. So if you let me, let's proceed to stage 4. How is this going to change me? So by now you know what the book is about, which is your opinion about it and its connection with other books you've read. But there's something missing. Aben Pagan, a successful educator and entrepreneur, points out that the trademark of true learning is behavior change. In other words, if I read a book but my actions, thoughts and emotions haven't changed, then I didn't learn. I simply accumulated information. So to complete this technique, after you read the book and have your summary, write down 3-5 to five ways your behavior will be different. Basically, how is this book going to change you? Perhaps you'll start saving 10% of your income, or you'll begin a new diet, or you'll be more forgiving. It all will depend on the book you've finished. Logically, this step will not apply to certain books like maths, but hey, perhaps you start using Pi for something useful. Who knows? Remember, true learning equals behavior change. By following these four steps, remembering what you read and incorporating the book's lessons in your life will be inevitable. Sure, it might take a bit more of work than just reading for reading's sake, but it will drastically improve your knowledge and understanding, as well as your life. As for how much to read, I find that setting a timer for one hour of uninterrupted reading a day is the best option. Also, don't forget to subscribe, give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend who might need some inspiration. See you soon.